Hello, my name is Milos from Serp API, and today we are going to talk about our Google Scholar API. First, let's go through our documentation. As you can see, there are quite a few parameters here that you can use for this API. So let's briefly talk about some of them. First, we have a queue parameter. It defines the query you want to search, and it is also a required field. You can use some prefixes here, like author or source, to narrow your search. In the next group, Parameters are used for date sorting. Here in the localization group, HL parameter is used for the page language. In the pagination group, we have star parameter, which is used to retrieve the results of a certain page. So for example, if you set its value to 10, it will return the second page of results. If you set its value to 20, it will return the third page of results, and so on. Next one is the num parameter, which defines the maximum number of results to return. The important thing is it is limited to 20 results per page. In the next section, this parameter right here can be used either as a search type or a filter. If we use it as a filter and set its value to 0 or 1, it can include or exclude patterns. We can also use it as a search type to search through your scores. In the next section, we have some filters. For example, if we want to exclude or include citation, or we want to filter adult content. And the last group is SERP API parameters. Here we have engine, which is a required field, and you need to set it to Google Scholar. Next we have no cache, so we can force SERP API to fetch the new and fresh results of the page. Next is async which is used for async requests and to retrieve results later. API key is your private key, and output can be either JSON or HTML. That was a brief summary of the parameters that you can use for the Google Scholar API. Now, let's go to the playground and see how to use them. To test Google Scholar API in our playground, we're going to use vaccine as a search query. As you can see, on the left side, we have an HTML page. And on the right side, we have extracted results in a JSON format. These right here are the main organic results of a page. And these right here are related searches. And as you can see, we are extracting both. So let's first go through organic results and see what exactly are we extracting for them. First, we have the title. Then, results ID. This is the ID of an individual result, and we are going to use it to extract sites, but that will come in a later video. Next, a link to the page, snippet, publication info, which is a string right here, from which we are extracting authors, their names, and links if available. Next, we have resource, and that's the link right here. As you can see, we have title, file format, and the link. And the last one, we have inline links, which are located right here. So let's now try and test a couple of parameters. For example, if we want to include results only from the year 2000 to 2015, we will set these two parameters. And as you can see, they are applied. If we want to return the second page of results, we would set result of set to 10. And if you scroll the HTML, you can see that the second page is selected, but you can also see that here in Serve API Pagination. You can also export your code with one of our many libraries. And you can use any of them. So for example, let's try curl. So just copy the example code from here, and let's try it out. As you can see, all of the results are returned in JSON format. Let's now try some of the other libraries, like Ruby, for example. If you want to try Ruby, first you need to install the gem. So Google search results gem. After that, just copy the code 
create new file, add the code, and let's, for example, print one of the organic results. So, dash results organic results, and let's grab the first one. Let's run that. And as you can see, we are grabbing the first result. And you can compare the titles right here. So yes, that's the first result. And that was about it for the overview of our Google Scholar API. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below the video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.